All right, friends, I remind you that tomorrow is NTC Day. So tomorrow you will need your social security number if you haven't um, been registered yet for um, dual credit this year, you'll need that tomorrow. If you've done the registration in another class, um, then you've already had that done, and so you just need to be here, preferably with a with a Chromebook, um, but we can utilize, um, we can share Chromebooks tomorrow too. Uh, so that'll be happening tomorrow. You'll also probably get the homework packet tomorrow and give you some, some work time on to that. Okay? So I want to pick up where we left off yesterday um, with building the unit circle. Um, so yesterday we ended up with... We developed or we found the... Zero degrees, which is also 360 degrees, or the zero radian to pi radian point one comma zero on the unit circle. Okay, so we found that yesterday. Okay. Then we also found we took that whole circle and we divided it in half. And so we said that that's the point negative one comma zero which is 180 degrees, which is pi radians. We took those degrees and the radians and divided them in half. Then we divided those halves in half, and we got um, this point up here, 0, 1, which was 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. And we also found this point down here, which was 0, comma, negative 1, and that was 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2 radians. Okay? So that's where we left off yesterday. Today, we're going to start with the, or we're going to get the other 12 key points. Okay? So let's start with the quarters. Okay? So half of the half of the half, so we took the whole thing, we divided it in half to get got our pi or our 180 degrees, then we divided it in half again to get our pi over 2 or our 90 degrees. I can divide that in half once again and I can get that one. So what's the degree measure going to be there? 45. That's going to be the 45 degree angle. 2 pi was the whole thing. Divided it in half, we got to pi. Divided that in half, got to pi over 2. Divide that in half, and we get pi over 4. So this would be also pi over 4 radians. Yeah. This triangle is going to come out right here. What is the hypotenuse of that triangle? the hypotenuse of that triangle. I thought you were pointing it to me on, oh, on your one. It's one, yeah. yeah that, I thought that you were, that's what you were doing. We didn't want to say it, but then I made you say it. Okay. So the hypotenuse is one, because it's the radius of the unit circle. So that's going to be one. Okay. Well, if that's 45 degrees right here, then that makes this be 
a 45 degree angle right there, makes this be a right angle, makes this be a 45 degree angle right there. So many 45 degree angles. Which means from yesterday, what are the two missing side lengths on that red triangle? Two over two? I did say root two over two. I hear you. Okay. So with that being said, knowing that those are what we found yesterday, what are the coordinates of this pi over 4, 45 degree point on the unit circle? Comma. Root 2 over 2. That point can be reflected over to here in quadrant number two. The math is all going to be the same. So what are the coordinates of that point? Negative and positive. What would the degree measure be? We went 45 to here, 45 more gets me 90, 45 more gets me 135. We went pi over 4 to get to here. We went another pi over 4, got me to pi over 2. Pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4. That's me to there. What one more pi over 4 gets me to what? 3 pi over 4. That then gets doubly reflected to get down to here. Now I'm in the negative negative quadrant. Forty five more from my last one gets me to one eighty. Forty five more gets me to two hundred and twenty five. Pi over four more from the last one gets me to 4 pi over 4, which is just pi, that's right here. Pi over 4 more gets me to 5 pi over 4 in terms of radians. Forty-five more, or pi over four more, gets me to three pi over two, or two hundred and seventy degrees. Forty-five more, or pi over four more, gets me to the positive-negative quadrant. What would the degree measure be there? Three fifteen. What would the radian measure be? 7 pi over 4. Okay. That gets us the quarters then. Now we've got the, the six, no, I like the eight 
that are not necessarily the easiest ones. Okay? But we'll teach them to you in a way that they can. Those are going to come out of, from what we learned yesterday, about our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, yesterday we said about the relationship with the 30, 60, 90 triangle was that if my radius, or excuse me, my hypotenuse was 1, what were the two missing side lengths? Start with the short one first. One half for the short one, and square it three over two for the big one. Okay. So now, if I go to this point right here, there is my triangle that would make this be the 30 degree angle there. So what would the coordinates be of this point? Come one half. It would be 30 degrees. 30 degrees, if I convert it to radians, is pi over 6. That triangle can be reflected to over here, and now this angle here is the 30 degree angle, which means then now I'm in the negative positive, oops, or coordinates. What would the degree measure be for there? Oh, yeah. 150? And that converted is 5 pi over 6. Double reflection puts it down to here. Now this is the 30 degree angle. We're in the negative negative quadrant. What would my degree measure be? Degree, 210 degrees which would be 7 pi over 6. That would get reflected over here. Now here would be the 30 degrees. This is the positive, negative, quadrant, what would my degree measure be? 330. And that would be 11 pi over 6 radians.
But what can also happen is we can take that triangle and we can, oops, we can take that triangle and we can spin it there and now the 60 degree angle gets put there. So what's going to happen to all of my purple coordinates? They're just going to be flipped around, right? So this is going to be 1 half comma root 3 over 2. This one is going to be 1, excuse me, negative 1 half square root 3 over 2. This one's going to be negative 1 half negative square root 3 over 2. And this one is going to be 1 half comma negative square root 3 over 2. Now we just got to figure out degrees and radians. Up here, this one's going to be 60 degrees, obviously. That, in terms of radians, is pi over 3. The 60 degree angle would now be here. So this one would be how many degrees? 120. Which would be 2 pi over 3 radians. The 60 degree angle would now be here, which means this one down here is going to be Two hundred and forty degrees, which is going to be four pi over three radians. This one over here, the sixty degree angle is now going to be there, so this is going to be three hundred degrees or five pi over 3 radians. Okay. So now you have a complete unit circle. Well, I shouldn't say you have a complete unit circle quite yet. Okay? Because you got it kind of hodgepodge all over. So let's go two pages past. And let's give you one unit circle to do. You will also have next week, Wednesday, a week from today, you will also be taking a unit circle memorization quiz where you will have to have this memorized for next week, Wednesday, and beyond. Okay? We'll talk more about that later, but just know that that is on the horizon. Okay? But really... I mean, truthfully, you only have to memorize the first quadrant because everything else just gets reflected. Okay? So you really only got to memorize the first quadrant. So you've got what we did yesterday. You've got this point here of 1, 0, and this point here of 0, 1. Those were both... The, so this was the 0 and the 360, the 0 and the 2 pi.
serves both inside. This would be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Here we had that one, which was 30 degrees, which is pi over 6 radians. We had this one. root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, 45 degrees pi over 4. And we had this one. Which was pi over 3 radians. 60 degrees, one half, comma, root three over two. Okay? That's really what you need to memorize. Because now then, you can just go over here, and you can say, well, this is 120 degrees. I've doubled that. I've went negative positive, and I've doubled that. Oops, I went a little too close on that one. There's your top half.
and there's your bottom half. Again, all of that plus the six relationships that we learned yesterday of cosine, secant, sine, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. Everything needs a co, remember. All need to be memorized by next Wednesday. Cosine off of the unit circle is the, cosine is the what? The x values, yes. Sine is the y value. Tangent is the y over x value. Now in your packet on that sheet, you're going to have to switch around your secant and your cosecant again. Just like we had you do yesterday. Okay, so it should be secant on top, cosecant in the middle there. Secant is what? 1 over x. Cosecant is 1 over y. And cotangent is x over y. Okay. If you go back a page, we will now put that into work based off of our unit circle. This is asking me for the sine at pi over 6. So I go to pi over 6 and I say sine is the y value. So the y value at pi over 6 is 1 half. So the sine at pi over 6 is 1 half. Cosine at pi over 4. It's telling me to go to pi over 4. Cosine is the x value. The x value of the coordinate is root 2 over 2. So the cosine at pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. Cotangent at 3 pi over 2. It's telling me to go to 3 pi over 2. Cotangent is x over y, which is 0 divided by negative 1. 0 divided by anything is 0. It is, I promise. The only thing it's not, 0 divided by 0. What is 0 divided by 0? So imagine if you had 0 cookies and you divided them among your 0 friends. Okay? Yeah. You're sad because you don't have any cookies. Or you're, you're sad because you don't have any friends. Yeah. And cookie Monster is sad because you don't have any cookies. <laughs> have you ever asked Siri to do that? No, I haven't. Ask, ask your phone then. What, what's 0 divided by 0? So. You figure out for me 2, 4, and 6, please. 2, 4, and 6. I get negative 1 half. I get negative root 2 over 2. And I get the square root of 2. I would love to do number 6. Let's break it. Okay, let's break this down. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the cosecant at 3 pi over 4, right? Yeah. Cosecant is what? One over, 1 over y, right? Okay, so at 3 pi over 4, my y value is root 2 over 2. 
Okay? So this is going to be 1 over root 2 over 2. Right? Keep change flip or just reciprocal would make that be 2 over the square root of 2. Right? Now, if you were paying attention to me yesterday, I said on the unit circle, we rationalize all of our denominators. Okay? So I don't like this one. So I've got to multiply it by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. No. It would be 2 square roots of 2 over 2. Which both outside 2's then would cancel each other out, leaving me just with the square root of 2. Yes. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Oh, okay. Okay. One more, number 7 here. Because I figured you wouldn't want to tackle this one on your own. Okay. So let's tackle number 7 together. Cosine squared of pi over 3. Well, that's the cosine of pi over 3, then squared. What's the cosine of pi over 3? 1 half? Yeah. 1 half? What is 1 half squared? That's 1 fourth. Secant squared of 5 pi over 6 is the secant at 5 pi over 6 squared. What is the secant at 5 pi over 6? Secant is what again? 1 over x. So I take the x value and I flip it. So the x value flip is going to be negative 2 over the square root of 3. And I square that. Right? What's negative 2 squared? 4. What's the square root of 3 squared? 3. The cosecant squared at 7 pi over 6 is the cosecant at 7 pi over 6, then squared. What is cosecant? Sine is what? What is cosecant? 1 over y, right? Or the reciprocal of y. So what is the y value at 7 pi over 6? The y value at 7 pi over 6? Negative 1 half, the reciprocal? Negative 2? And what is negative 2 squared? 4. How am I going to add and subtract those numbers together? Common denominator. What's my common denominator going to be? 12. How many twelfths is 1 fourth? 3. How many twelfths is 4 thirds? 16. How many twelfths is 4? 48. Now that I've got common denominators, what can I do? Add and subtract the tops. 3 plus 16. 19 minus 48. 
Negative 29 over 12, can that be reduced? Can't show work for the first six. I mean, while there's a little bit of work to be shown with like when you get into secants and cosecants and cotangents, okay, and tangents, but Definitely got to show work on problems like these. Okay? Right? Again, I remind you that next week, Wednesday, will be your unit circle memorization quiz. You get one attempt. It is a summative. It goes into the book as, or into the grade book as a summative. You need to know, if you turn to this page, so now if you go one more, you, that... That page right here, this page right here, is the quiz. Okay? So everything that you have on this page is your quiz next week, Wednesday. You just got to have it memorized. Okay?